Hello and welcome to Political Science 119, State and Local Government. My name is Jonathan Parker. As you can see, your, your Canvas page is still under construction, but I am going to give you the uh, rundown on the syllabus. And I'm doing this just as kind of a catch-all because nothing is really written in stone until after the first day of class. So I don't know how many more of you I'm going to get or if you know the people in the class are all going to drop and I'm going to get a whole bunch of different students in. Um, anything could happen. Anything's possible. So instead of giving this syllabus talk 15 different times, I can just point you to uh, Canvas and say, here is what you need. So it's state and local in-person syllabus. This shouldn't take too terribly long. Uh, you are in 119. You should be in section 1584. We meet Tuesday and Thursday from 12 to 115. That's been a problem in the past. I don't know why people have just shown up on a Tuesday or people have just shown up on a Thursday. It's been the same deal when I've had classes on a Monday and a Wednesday. People have just kind of chose which, which day they're going to show up on. Uh, contact information. Here is my email. Jonathan period Parker at ICC dot edu. So here's my email. Name spelled correctly. Second problem here. People spell it J O H N, J O H N, O T H O N, all sorts of weird spellings. When I was born back in 1776, this was the correct spelling of Jonathan. This was the common spelling, I should have said. Um, it's here. It's here. Uh, there is the correct spelling. Well, it'll be up when I get this page together, but you'll have it in at least two or three different places. So I get students all the time who are very mad at me because they spend, send some email to J-O-H-N or J-O-N-A-T-H-O-N, and I don't know why the emails don't bounce. I guess there's somebody working at ICC who spells their name in that way, um, but it's not me. So I'm in room 216 uh, on the East Peoria campus, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, my last class, which I, I'm pretty sure is you guys. I go right there from my last class uh, and stay there until 2.45, Tuesday and Thursday, other office hours by appointment only. And I'm very willing to hold uh, extra office hours virtually via Zoom. Uh, you have to talk to me to coordinate a meeting. Uh, if you want to exercise that option, I'll accommodate you if I can find a mutually agreeable time to meet with you. I have a two-year-old home. I am working my way through grad school. I'm doing this. Uh, there's a million and one other things going on. My time is is uh, I don't exactly have a whole lot of free time. So if we can meet with each other, we can meet with each other. And I've met with students at 8, 9, even 10 o'clock at night before. It's, it's not a problem if that's what you need. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns during the semester, and this is a big one, please reach out. Remember, teachers cannot read minds. I don't know when uh, we became mind readers. I think it was after we came back from the pandemic. I won't know that you are having difficulty unless you tell me. Reach out if you need help. And I'm available by email. Otherwise, that's a great way to get a hold of me. I'll try to get back to you within a day. Uh, what does that mean? One business day. An email sent on Monday will be answered by Tuesday at the latest. An email sent on Friday, on the other hand, will be answered by the following Monday at the latest. So, you know, just don't bite my head off if it's, it's, it takes 25 hours instead of a day to answer an email. I will get back to you. Uh, you can read the course description on your own. You can read the institutional learning outcomes, the course learning outcomes. Uh, the book, Governing States and Localities, 8th edition, Kevin Smith and Alan Greenblatt, um, you're not required to purchase any additional books for this section. Online materials, supplemental documents will be provided by the instructor. I am the great tree killer of Illinois Central College. You're going to be getting other um, documents from me. Uh, so expect that. PowerPoints, other online supplements. But the book, uh, it is worth buying. 
we don't use it heavily, but then again, we don't use it lightly. It's somewhere in the it's somewhere in the middle. It's worth purchasing, uh, I would say. So please uh, have access to a computer. If not, uh, you know, at least a, an internet accessible phone. We do do some things in class, you know, online. Uh, the course information you have, okay, you need reliable internet access uh, and email account in order to complete this course. I hope you all have an email account uh, through ICC. If not, uh, I can direct you to somebody who can help you with that. I can't. Um, but yeah, reliable internet. We do some internet-based activities in the classroom and you will need your computer or an internet accessible phone for that. I'll give you a warning. Like we're going to be doing a activity next Thursday. Bring your laptops. You know, you don't need to bring a laptop to every class, I'll tell you. Alright. Course overview. Uh, this is what we cover. I've not taught this class a ton, but I've I've never ended up teaching it in this order. So this is everything we're going to cover, but not necessarily the order we're going to cover it in. So in the event of unforeseen situations that require change, uh, faculty members reserve the right to adjust assignments, due dates, grading standards, class schedule, or the course elements. Reasonable attempts will be made to communicate these changes in a timely manner on the course canvas announcement section and by college email and verbally I'll tell you in class too if something is going to happen. So course policies, email, as I said, you know, top of page one, email, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N, period, P-A-R-K-E-R, -E at I-C-C dot E-D-U. I will try to respond to all emails within 24 hours. Again, if it's 25, 26 hours, please don't bite my head off. Nothing is ever so important that we can't, you know, discuss it in the class on a Tuesday or a Thursday. Assignment submissions. I will not accept any electronic forms of submission for classwork. I'm an old school teacher in that way. You're going to print it out. You're going to turn it in. Or if you have very neat handwriting, and you better have very neat handwriting because I don't grade things that I can't read. Uh, you write it out and you turn it in. But everything you hand in must be a hard copy that you print out and bring to class. If you're sick, email me, let me know. Uh, when you really, you know, you can do so, you bring a hard copy of your work to the next class you attend. There should never be an instance where you were emailing me any assignment. We've tried that in the past. Uh, it's never again, never again. Uh, I've gotten emails in the past stating something to the effect of I can't come to class because I need to study for a test I have later. I'll turn in my work next class. This was actually an email I got. They heard from me, you will not be turning in anything you missed if I receive an email like you from that. It's just disrespectful. Uh, you know, come up with a better story than that. Better lie. I mean, academic citation. Oh, I'm big on academic citation and academic honesty. Whenever you turn in a written assignment, you're required to cite your source if you use a direct quote from a book article website or you paraphrase a chunk of text from the book article website or you present a theory, argument, opinion that does not belong to you. This is just this is just standard in higher education now. If you and it has been for a long time. It should have been standard in high school. Uh, if the work is not your own, tell me who the work belongs to. Who the quote? Who said the quote that you cited in the paper? It's just good practice. It's called plagiarism if you don't do that. Uh, at the end of your written assignments, you are required to provide a list of sources that you have utilized for the assignment. That is, if you do use a source, outside source that you've utilized we will use the latest MLA format, MLA 9, for bibliographies and inline citations. Use the template in the following link. 
you don't have to. Uh, this is just what I used when I was going through school. I know there are a million and one um, citation generators online. This is just one. Um, you have to view an ad now to get a citation for free, but the site still works. It's fairly intuitive. Here, I'll show you the site. You just create citation. Okay, choose your source, website. You type in the website. You click search. It's, it's very intuitive. You shouldn't have a problem with it. Inline citations are also expected in any writing assignments that you turn in where you have used outside sources. If you need help with inline citations, if you need help with uh, bibliography, anything like that, the, the Writing Center is a wonderful resource that we have here on campus. So general guideline here, if you have any doubts about whether something needs to be cited, please just create a citation for it. Don't take chances with your grade because I take that very seriously and you will be gambling with your grade if you don't do it. I've never taken off points for excess citations. I just circle it's needed and need to cite that. Okay, you learn for next time. Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Again, Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Again, Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Don't cite Wikipedia in any work that you do. It will negatively impact your grade. How will it negatively impact my grade? Well, uh, cite it and find out. No, please don't. It, just don't use it. Academic misconduct and plagiarism. On page 24 of your Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook, it says this. Based on the severity of the offense, the instructor may recommend failure for an assignment or failure for the course. Multiple instances of academic misconduct could include sanctions up to dismissal from the college. Now, I don't want to do that. You don't want me to do that. I've only ever had to get and up to that failure for an assignment uh, for the student or the class to learn um, their collective or individual or collective lessons. It's been an issue every semester that I have taught here. Every single semester, somebody thinks they're going to be smart and pull one over on me, and every single semester I catch them. The first time I catch you plagiarizing, I'll give you a zero for whatever assignment you plagiarized on, whether that be a one-point assignment or a 150-point assignment. Um, no opportunities for redo. The second time I catch you plagiarizing, I will fail you for the course. No exceptions to this will be made. None. Late submissions. I don't accept late work, except under the standard circumstances, like illness, death, and the family. Um, you know, just let me know. Then we can work something out. If you come to me with an excuse, like I went to a Taylor Swift concert last night, or I have homework to do, however, you're not going to be turning anything in. We have the standard 10 point grading scale. Uh, let you read that on your own. Methods of assessment of student learning. So, this is what you all really care about the grade. So, 80% of your grade the final is 20 percent so you have two tests quizzes that will add up at least 200 points a pre-test the post-test your attendance a short a short speech and classwork and other homework is assigned so one two three four five six seven so we're looking at 700 points roundabout and your final is 20% of your grade. All right. You get a day off on Monday, September 4th for Labor Day. Unfortunately, that doesn't include my class. You come into my class the next day. Um, Thanksgiving breaks Monday, November 20th to Sunday, November 26th. And the fall semester ends on December 15th. All right. News resources. This gets harder and harder to do as the semester goes on. The semester's go on because everything's becoming so polarized you know but I, I've tried to keep this as about down the middle as I could um, I know this is kind of to the right this is kind of to the left uh, 
this, I guess, now is state-sponsored media. I don't, I don't know. I always have thought it was pretty centered. BBC, I've included BBC on there because uh, you know, sometimes I think the foreign press covers us more uh, fairly and, and independently than our own media does. Okay, do not take a test and then forget about the material. It's kind of stacked. Uh, the topics on top of each other is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you'll be hearing and dealing with everything we study throughout the semester. A subject like federalism, hint, 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 might appear on test one, and then again on test two, and then again on the final, and maybe on a quiz in between. It is not the responsibility of the instructor, being me, to chase you down and make sure you're keeping up with your work. I have many, many students, and I, I, I just can't do that. If you miss a class, ask me. Ask a classmate. What if anything you you missed? And if you don't, you know you're going to start seeing a lot of zeros on campus. All right, attendance. Students are expected to attend class each week. Attendance is defined as completing classwork, doing homework assignments, as well as attending lectures. There is a 100-point grade attached to you showing up to class to encourage attendance. Uh, there will be a binder in front of the classroom with an attendance sheet, and everybody's name will be on there. It's your responsibility to make sure you sign in at the beginning of every class session. Uh, this is for one reporting purposes when the college asks me uh, to mark who the never attenders and non-attenders are. We do that for financial aid purposes. If you never came to my class, okay, then you know that gets reported. Someone does something with your financial aid. Uh, and then the non-attenders, if you stop coming to my class, I have to report it, and then somebody does something with your financial aid. Uh, so if you do not sign in for a class, you are not present. Simple as that. Uh, when it come time, comes time for me to determine your attendance grade uh, and also to mark the not never attenders, I look at the binder to see when the last time you came to class was in Canvas to see what assignments you've turned in. You can't miss lecture, not turn in homework, and expect to stay in and succeed in the course. The handbook says that 5% of classes missed during a semester constitute an excessive number of absences for a class and may merit being dropped. That's only one week of classes. That's a Tuesday and a Thursday. Uh, and that'll be the guideline I use when determining non and never attenders. I've had to drop students for excessive absences in the past. I've hated doing it. I don't want to do it again. Please don't make me do it again. So just come to class. All right. So take away from the syllabus. Keep an open line of communication with me, and you're going to be fine. You'll learn something from this class. You might even... <gasps> enjoy yourself. Uh, guest lecturers, I haven't done this in a while, but I've liked to bring people in who have practical political experience uh, to talk with classes about a variety of issues, state issues. In this class, of course, if uh, that can be arranged, I'll make that happen. Disclaimer, I reserve the right to add or subtract from any part of the syllabus this semester progresses. Oh, and I thought I got them all. He will make every attempt to notify students of changes during regular class meetings through Canvas, and I've sent this to the print shop so it's too late to fix it, and or through email. All right, and uh, of course we'll be doing more than just this, but this is an assignment I we're going to do. I have planned. So the short speech. Learning to speak publicly and answer questions is an important life skill. I've heard once that someone told me that they read that uh, people are more afraid of public speaking than they are of death. Well, we're going to try to conquer that. Because uh, you need to learn to become as comfortable as you possibly can with public speaking before you move on to a four-year institution or to your career. You need to have the confidence to communicate with a professor, an employer, a colleague in a respectful manner. And that's going to serve you in good stead for the rest of your life. Purpose in relation to political science. When 19, we live in a hostile and divided political climate. I think we all know that, in which we have stopped being accepting of alternative points of view. 
So as scholars, and that's what we are, we must be able to hear ideas with which we may disagree without becoming disagreeable. I expect passionate and civil discourse for this assignment and throughout our discussions over the semester. So you're going to pick any politically oriented topic having to do with Illinois or Illinois politics. Uh, you would like and prepare a three minute argument as to why you support or oppose the subject you have chosen. Um, okay, I support, it would be now supported, J.B. Pritzker's mask mandate. I support Illinois bringing back the death penalty. I support X idea to stop people moving out of the state. These are just examples. Come, you come up with your own ideas. You can use these if you wish. Uh, then you should be prepared to answer questions for no more than three minutes at the end of your prepared remarks. It's as simple as that. Uh, I'll pass around a sign-up sheet sometime early during the semester. You'll choose a class period in which to give your speech. The speeches will be given in person. The speeches will be given in front of the class. Uh, I understand, however, that some people are just genuinely terrified of public speaking. I, I do allow a few of these speeches to be given in my office. Now, if all, however many there are, say 30, 30 of you decide you're scared to death, you know, and need to give the speech in my office, then... Uh, we're going to have a problem, but if it's just a couple of you, okay. You have to be present to deliver your speech on the day you sign up for. There will be limited opportunities to make up this assignment. So this is the rubric right here. How are you going to be graded? Okay, I just don't have this in rubric form, but it's one, two, three, four right there. Did you stand up and deliver a three-minute speech? Do I think that you might have practiced this beforehand. I hope you did, yeah. Did you turn in a typed outline, which logically presents what you plan to say? Did the student also turn in a correctly formatted bibliography, MLA 9, documenting their sources? Did you use at least three sources? Using Wikipedia as a source will automatically lose you five points for this category. And what's going to get you a zero right away without any chance of changing your grade, interrupting a classmate in the middle of their speech. Uh, interrupting a classmate trying to ask or answer a question. That's just rude. That is becoming disagreeable. Uh, that is not going to be tolerated. So, that is it. Um, I look forward to a great semester with all of you. If you are a late registrant and are watching this video, uh, you need to find me at the end of the next class period. You see me and get a syllabus quiz and a pretest. Uh, other than that, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, shoot me an email, find me in class. I look forward to a great semester with you all. And uh, thank you for listening.